What do you think about the Fourth Amendment and so many cops seizing people's stuff, unreasonable search and seizure? Uh, would you support a law to charge officers with tyranny for seizing and, and sentencing them to, to, to jail? I'll, I'll parse the question because there's two parts of it. So we'll talk about the Fourth Amendment and then we'll talk about charging cops. So I am an absolute Fourth Amendment uh, champion, I dare say. I've organized grassroots coalitions in dozens of cities across the country to basically fight police abuses in the political sphere at the local level. Um, in fact, it wasn't very long ago, just in the last couple of weeks, uh, a, a community here in Northern California um, adopted a set of... Um, a, Davis, California, basically adopted a police surveillance transparency measure that I spent the last year and a half um, helping support there in that community, as well as dozens of other communities across the country. So the Fourth Amendment is one to which I'm very, very deeply committed. It has been viciously eroded at the margins and at the center. And I'll try to unpack that. At the, at the margins, it's been eroded by, for instance, limitations on the exclusionary rules of remedy when the state overreaches. It's also been eroded at the margins by, for instance, uh, impunity for police when retaliating against citizens who exercise their First Amendment rights to, for instance, record police activities. Meanwhile, we, and all that is to say, by being able to arrest people or by effectively arresting people for trying to record their activities. Police have emboldened themselves, intimidated the public, and ex effectively expanded their authorities without corresponding jurisprudence. Um, the frontal attack on the Fourth Amendment has three letters, it NSA. And the idea that you have a right to be free from un unreasonable searches and seizures, which I want to make very clear here, is much more than privacy. Is that, that notion is incompatible with a regime of mass surveillance. And I want to now explain how more than just privacy is implicated in the Fourth Amendment. Despite having a First Amendment, which is to say a commitment to freedom of speech, assembly, uh, the press, uh, the right to petition the government of redress of grievances, as well as with religion, we in this country have repeatedly endured attacks by our government on constitutionally protected dissent. If you understand that history, of First Amendment dissent suppression, then the implications of contemporary Fourth Amendment search and seizure violations becomes more clear. It's not merely privacy that is at stake when the state claims omniscience into everything that someone has read or written or heard over the course of their lives. What ultimately stands at greatest risk is the freedom of expression on which our democracy rests. I think this is the reason why the Fourth Amendment itself has penumbras that cross over into the first. If you think of the first and the fourth amendment together, what we are talking about is not just the right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures and not just the right to your own opinion. It is ultimately the opportunity for democracy to exist. And we flirt with losing those protections at enormous risk that I think most Americans don't acknowledge. Um, on to the second part of that question with respect to arresting police. I do certainly favor police accountability for violence, for instance, police accountability for profiling. We've talked about those issues. Uh, charging police with tyranny, I think, might be a stretch. Um, but I, I do think that there is a, a, an important role to play for police accountability. And I will say this, qualified immunity is a doctrine when if, if a police officer, for instance, shoots you or and leaves you alive or shoots a relative of yours and you're suing under their estate, the section of the law under which you sue for constitutional torts is Section 1983. It has a defense, qualified immunity, that essentially is the escape hatch for police. And I think it's very important to consider qualified immunity reform. For instance, I would like it to be per se illegal, which is to say liability as a matter of law, for any police officer who kills an unarmed person. There is no perspective from which that can be determined to be reasonable, and qualified immunity should not defend those actions. Uh, so I think to your, to your questioner's interests, I would absolutely support liability as a per se matter for police that kill unarmed people. I wouldn't extend that necessarily to searches and seizures that lack a legal basis, particularly because the exclusionary rule, which is the protection from that evidence being used in criminal prosecutions, that is the remedy for those kinds of violations. I know that was a long answer. I hope that was uh, that was an awesome answer. Precise. That was I, an excellent.